So we move on to the introduction to air distribution and air diffusion, get technical. So first up, the question is, when is a person comfortable? And the answer to that is a person is comfortable when their body heat loss equals their heat production without them sensing any change in temperature. And there's a, a number of variables to this. Uh, we, we produce and lose heat, heat loss and gain through conduction, convection, radiation, and evaporation. And we have some personal variables. These ones that generally we can't control, this is the person's clothing, their activity, and their metabolic rate. And then we have the space variables. And these are the ones that as air conditioning contractors you would control or engineers you design for. So the dry bulb temperature, the relative humidity, the air velocity, and the noise. And the noise is often left out, but it's important. No one wants to be sitting in a noisy environment. But firstly, let's define um, the condition space. The condition space is any space that is uh, contained, and that would be within 150 mil, 150 mil of the walls, generally 1.8 above floor level. It would be 600 in from uh, a wall that contained a window. And in, in a seated uh, application, it might be reduced down to 1.3 in height. ASHRAE's definition of comfort looks like this. And this is one I did from uh, the Berkeley calculator. The op op uh, operative temperature is 23, airspeed of 0 0.18, relative humidity at 43, metabolic rate of 1.1 and a clo value of one. And you can see there that it's sitting right on 23 degrees and, and above there, give the numbers, you'll see there's a PMV of 0 0.1 uh, and a PPD of 5%. So that is uh, in line with Green Star for the um, two Green Star credits. So it's the best rating you get. And that's what we're aiming to achieve, comfort for everybody. The ASHRAE definition of comfort is temperature 22.8 to 25, relative humidity 25 to 60, with a maximum velocity of 0 0.25 in cooling and 0 0.15 in heating. Just remember these values. I see the airspeed over here, I'm putting it at 0 0.18, and you can see here 0 0.25. These will come up again in the presentation. Now the ISO 7730 and the ASHRAE 55 are uh, very similar or the same. Um, and they are a, an amalgam of these elements. The thermal resistance, so the clove value, the metabolic rate, the physical activity, the air temperature, or the optimum operative temperature, the air velocity and the mean space velocity, relative humidity, and the mean radiant temperature, these six elements. And this is a statement from uh, a professor at ASHRAE. Provided there is sufficient heating and cooling to meet the thermal and humidity control requirements, comfort is almost completely a function of the space air distribution. So what this is saying is um, no matter how much uh, engineering you put behind your air handling unit, your um, fan core units, if you've just got holes in the ceiling and pump the air in there, no one's going to be comfortable. It's all about using the air distribution products that we make and others um, that make the difference and make the people comfortable. And so I'm going to concentrate on these elements of, of the um, comfort criteria, the air temperature, the air velocity, and the relative humidity. But for, for the purpose of this presentation, I'm going to, uh, we're going to not not in that we're going to assume the relative humidity is, is in our in our range at 45%. So firstly here I'm going to look at the effects of air motion on comfort. So this is a graph or a chart that will show you and this is for the ankle region. If we have a velocity in the space of here it's showing 
uh, 0.425, and we were had a one degree differential um, between the local temperature and the ambient. 10% 10, 10 of the people would be dissatisfied. If we simply reduce that velocity down to 0.18 meters a second, and we're on temperature, virtually no one in the space would be dissatisfied. And here is the same chart for the neck region or the upper region, which is the more critical one of the two. And you can see here 0 0.35 and one degree differential. 30% of the population in the, in the space would be uh, feeling uncomfortable. But if we reduce this down to 0 0.25, only 20%. And now, once we get to the 20% part, this is generally an accepted value when you have 80% of the occupants comfortable and 20% may be complaining or feeling some level of discomfort. This is usually acceptable. But if we reduce this down to um, 0 0.15 meters a second in within the space, less than 10% of the population would be uh, dissatisfied with a, a one degree, uh, minus one degree variation in temperature. And if we bring that back up to 0 0.18, which is like what I put into the um, program earlier, you'll see that on temperature, virtually no one would feel a level of coolness or a level of warmth. They'd all be in the neutral zone, comfortable. So what I'm trying to point out here is that it's, it's very critical to control the velocity in the space around the temperature. Um, the example would be, Without, con without changing the temperature, when you turn a fan on, you can feel a sensation of coolness. Now, there's no change in temperature there. It's just a change in velocity. So the, 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 the correlation between temperature and vo velocity are very critical. So you can see here, here is where, where we have the, the a little grid of uh, an explanation of the um, tables that I just showed before. Well, you can see the, the local velocities and the temperature set points and the degrees just offset. So if we had a velocity of 0.4 metres a second within the space and a temperature of 24 degrees, 20% of the people would be dissatisfied. So that's just virtually just from, from the um, air velocity being too high. And if we reduce it down to, say, 0.3 metres a second at 23, about 10% would be uh, dissatisfied, and that would still be a very, very high level of comfort. But if we reduce it down to 0.18 meters a second and on temperature, virtually everybody in the space would feel a neutral effect. No one would be feeling cool, no one would be feeling warm. Everybody would have a neutral reaction. And this, this reaction to the temperature and velocity was um, developed by Professor Fanger in, in, in Denmark, where he, he studied temperature and velocity and the people's reaction to to their um, to to temperature and velocity and the combination of the both, in order to create a predictable um, value that he could predict how they would react to the, the to temperature and velocity. So you can see here his predicted mean vote index here shows a neutral point and plus one to plus three plus three being hot and a scale on the negative in the, in the cooling from minus one to minus three being cold. What we're aiming for is to have everybody in the cooling process. Now in Green Star, for one credit point, you need to be between minus one and plus one. And that looks like this. And so you see here on, on the bell curve here, percentage of dissatisfaction people would need to be below 25% to get that one credit point. And if we aim for two credit points, which is minus 0.5 and plus 0.5 on the curve, you end up being below 10% of the population need to be comfortable. And if we take it a step further, we would go down below 5% of the population or around 5% would be in the neutral zone. And the ASHRAE 7730 is 
and and the velocity movements are, are created around the draft rating which is, a, is again, a full calculation of the floor temperature, the radiant temperature, velocity gradients, terminal velocities, turbulence intensity of the products. And I've got my little window here over my, you know, I'll just move this over here. Um, and I've got the three categories are, are, are related in the ISO. Categories A, B, and C. And these are based around uh, draft ratings. A draft rating of 30% is category C. A gra gra draft rating of 20% is category B. And a draft rating of 10% is category A. And these are all based around turbulence intensity values. And these relate to the types of air diffusion equipment we are using or the types of systems we are installing. 10% um, being a displacement system, 20% being a mix, so maybe a floor swirl where we're doing some induction and then displacing the air. 40% being the majority of the, uh, the systems we install here in Australia, being a mixed overhead system, whether that be with swirl diffusers or four-way diffusers or pattern diffusers or swirl um, perforated diffusers. They're from overhead and they are a mixing system. And the last there is a, a, a turbulence intensity of 60%, which would be for so, something like sidewall registers. I'm gonna concentrate here on um, the 40% turbulence intensity for an overhead system. And you can see here for a velocity value of 0 0.25 meters a second, at 40% turbulence intensity or an overhead system. And on 23 degrees, we would have, let me just move my little fellow here again, um, a, a percentage of a draft rating of 30%, and that would equate to a percentage of dissatisfaction, category C, of less than 15%. If we reduce that velocity down to 0 0.18, again at uh, turbulence intensity of 40% and on temperature at 23, we would move to a draft rating of 20% and a percentage of dissatisfaction of less than 10% for category B. And for category A, we would be down around about um, a mean space velocity of 0 0.12 for a mixed system on temperature, and that would equate to a dissatisfaction value of less than 6%. So you can see how here how um, velocity is playing a part in your, your ratings within the ISO. I'm gonna move out now on to the ADPI, and this is another way of ensuring you have comfort within the space, whilst the ISO uh, dictates um, where you need to be or what you're trying to achieve, uh, the ADPI, uh, is a, a method of selecting and um, laying out your air diffusion equipment effectively to ensure that you get the conditions that we're looking for in terms of uh, temperature and velocity. So the ADPI. The ADPI is um, a ratings factors or a rating value. These are the factors that we use in the ADPI and that's the type of outlet and model the room dimensions and the layout of the air diffusion equipment, the room load as it varies, and the throw of the outlet to the velocity, terminal velocity that is, of 0 0.25 metres a second. And this is what the ADPI is in reality. It's a test. It was designed as a test, uh, either in a, um, on site or in a... Um, mock-up situation, and it's a, a an evaluation of the effective draft temperature. This is the formula for effective draft temperature, and what we would do is we would set up a whole grid of points across the space at uh, 100 mil off the floor, 600 mil off the floor, 1.1 meters off the floor, and 1.7 off the floor. And this grid would be throughout the space. And we would measure all of these points, no matter how many there are, uh, for temperature and velocity. 
and we would monitor the supply air temperature coming into the space and the load would be calculated. And so basically we would bring the room into equilibrium, we'd be required to hold the room in equilibrium and then test all the points for three minutes at a time. And then you put all of the values that you collect into the formula. And if the answer comes out at minus 1.7, to plus 1.1 and no velocity that you measured within the space is greater than 0 0.35, then you would have a positive uh, result. So this is very comprehensive. It's not done very often. I have done several of these for buildings here in Australia um, in a mock-up application, not on site. Um, this whole system was designed or started in 1923 by ASHRAE and probably cemented in the 1970s where they produced a table, which I'll show you in a moment. So the, effect, uh, the ADPI is an evaluation of effective draft temperature using this formula. It looks a little bit like this. If, if we did that test and we had a a hundred points there. We measured all the points and 80 of them were acceptable. We'd have 80 over 100, and therefore we'd have an ADPI of 80. And basically we're saying that within that range, 80% of the population would be comfortable. Um, the parallelogram you can see here on screen shows the point of minus 1.7 here out to plus 1.1. And it shows you the temper variation what we're looking for. We're trying to stay within this range. And the ADPI helps you to do this. Now, not every, oh, sorry, I've just got one more little slide piece there. You can see here, if we're down to about 0 0.15 meters a second and on temperature, pretty much no one is gonna feel any, any effects of uh, the conditioning. They're going, not gonna notice any change in temperature. Everybody's going to be comfortable. So this is, this is the ADPI and how to use it. This little formula is part of it. Um, the throw at 0 0.25 meters a second and divided by the characteristic room length. So this is what we do, what we use when we don't, when we want to either design the, the, um, uh, the system using the ADPI method or when we want to validate one. And to do this, you need, you need to have air diffusion equipment tested to the ASHRAE standard, standard 70. Because what it asks us to do in that standard is to produce um, throw velocity, throw to three different terminal velocities. Because air coming from, a, from one of our air diffusion products Come, is delivered in four zones. The initial zone is uh, the exit velocity where very little um, induction is done. The second is where it starts to expand and some induction starts. Zone three is where high induction is incurring. And um, zone four is as the uh, air diffusion product or the Isovel of the, the outlet is starting to slow and we're getting down into around about 0 0.25 meters a second. And what we have to do in part of testing our, our equipment is to test um, how many meters from the outlet we, we have for 0 0.75 meters a second would be our first zone test. The second would be at 0 0.5 meters, sec meters per second and we measure the throw to that distance. And then the last is at 0 0.25 and we measure the throw um, at that final terminal velocity. And the final terminal velocity is the one we use uh, within the ADPI. If it was a radial outlet, we would measure it very similarly, just uh, on a radial basis. So you have to remember this formula, T to 0 0.25 meters a second as a throw value divided by L, the characteristic room length. And here are the characteristic room lengths. So we've got the distance in a, in a sidewall register, got the distance to the wall perpendicular to the jet, for circular or radial diffusers. We've got 
distance to the closest wall or intersecting jet. We've got uh, values there for sill. We've got values there for slot. We've got values there for light air troughers. And we've got values there for cross flow pattern diffusers. And this is the table that ASHRAE produced so that we, we can design around the ADPI. And if we do as such, we could expect if we were to test, if we were to test, that we would achieve an ADPI of 80 plus. So what they did is they measured all the different types of outlets back in the 70s to produce this chart, which is shown in the ASHRAE handbook. And still pretty much similar as well, I've got shown here. And what it, what it nominates is all the different types of diffusers, of various room loads, and then a ratio of 0 0.25 divided by L over on the right-hand side, which I've highlighted one there. I'm going to just use this as the example. This is radial swirl diffuser would, would move into where we see circular diffusers. And you can see here, I've highlighted uh, 0 0.5 to 1.5. And that would equate to a T to 0 0.25 divided by L uh, at 125 watts a square meter. And what this means is that we need to lay out uh, diffuser outlets out in such that they are uh, 0 0.5 to 1.5 um, the length of the characteristic room length. And that being in this case for a ceiling diffuser, is shown here as X or L. So you can see L is from the diffuser to the wall and then down to the uh, zone at 1.8 above floor level. And the X is from the diffuser to the wall. And that would be the same for the diffuser to the intersection of the diffuser uh, coming the other way. So all we need to do is make sure that we lay our diffusers out for 125 watts a square meter within 0 0.5 to 1.5 of that characteristic room length. Now we should be doing this for both uh, in a VAV system for both uh, minimum and maximum airflows. And just so it's uh, real, this is a project here in Melbourne where we were asked to verify the ADPI for the design. And this is for uh, Melbourne Quarter. And what we did was we took a typical floor, of which is about 36, I think, on this job. And we're looking at the perimeter zone here. And for the perimeter zone, we had a uh, value of um, watts per square metre of 80 to 130. Uh, that meant we needed to have a, an ADPI ratio of 0 0.5 to 1.5, as I was similar to the example I just showed. And this was for swirl diffusers. And so we had a swirl diffuser with a 350 inlet. These were a 500 grid. We had a room load of 80 to 130. We had, a, let's do the first one here, it was 130 uh, litres at maximum, 39 at minimum for VAV. It had a throw at the maximum of 2.7 metres a second. It had a throw at minimum of 0.8, and the characteristic room length is 2.5 metres. Now, in a, in a very large building and a floor layout like this, we don't want, really want to go around and do in each individual outlet. I don't think there's uh, something like 160 outlets a, a, a floor here. We don't really want to go have to do, do them all one by one by one by one. It can be done that way. But generally, the, the, the diffusers on a, on a typical floor are laid out to a grid. And so we would take, and, and as I have done here, it says here, internal zone mean characteristic room length or CRL. So I've mapped it all out. I've averaged it all out. And I've come up with a characteristic room length of 2.5 meters. So what we do is we take our throw to 0 0.25, which is 2.7 divided by 2.5 will give us 1.08 meters, or answer, the answer is 1.08. 1 it falls within our 
range of 0 0.5 to 1.5. Therefore, it has verified that it has achieved the ADPI of 80 in the design. In this case, uh, and, and it seems to be the case, uh, the ratios of um, VAVs turned down is so great these days that it's very hard to get the ADPI to function both for maximum and minimum. In this case, turning right down to 30% meant we were just a little under this 0.5 value. Um, but it was argued at the time that that's because the load was so low that it was very unlikely that there was going to be any um, uh, requirement and very low velocities anyway. Um, it was accepted. But um, generally, the, the requirement is for both minimum and maximum to be within that range. But as I say, the turndown ratios are so great these days that it's very much harder to do that at, at, with a fixed geometry. We may have been able to do that if we had to change the geometry, uh, but that would mean higher pressure at the upper end uh, and, and satisfying the lower end. So the, the, the um, result here was was agreed to uh, with go the lower end as it was only marginally out anyway and let it pass. And so you can see here that was an example, but this is more of it. We did both the internal and the perimeter zone as a separate, and we verified all the points uh, for, for their um, compliance to the ADPI. So the expectations you have with ADPI, what the ADPI does, it just asks you to look carefully and um, ensures proper application and deployment of the air diffusion equipment you're using. So it's asking you to, when you select it, go to the data, use the data and lay, lay everything out in accordance with it. Uh, one of the benefits of the ADPI is when you have uh, laid things out correctly to the ADPI, you have a high air change effectiveness. So it's in, it's ensuring that you have good mixing of your supply air and your outdoor air, and you'll end up with a high ACE. Uh, so what it's asking, when, when you're doing it this way, it's allowing space. You're spacing the outlets correctly so that they do have a uh, ability to do uh, their work and do the mixing that they're required to do. The ADPI method is suitable for heating up to less than um, 10 degree differentials. And it has been demonstrated that you could use it down to as low as five degrees. I'm not sure that we need to go that far, but um, that has there is a research paper that does indicate that it's possible. So that's it. The ADPI is simply 0 0.2, the throw to 0 0.25 meters a second divided by the characteristic room length value. So remember that. Going to move on to room induction. Room induction is uh, related in that what I was just saying, that provided the spatial layout is correct, you, you have the, the outlet do, do its work effectively. So this is a simple little, rate, um, little equation which um, demonstrates how much work diffusers are doing. It uses um, uh, the supply air volume, the discharge velocity, the velocity at a distance, and I'm going to use 0 0.25 because that's the one that is always coming up and is the one that we nominate. And it has an, in, uh, an entrainment coefficient added to that, 1.4 for infinite slots and 2 for round free uh, axial jets. It looks like this. This is from our, our software. We've, we've come up with a, um, a swirl diffuser here. I've got the value of 250 litres a second, velocity of uh, 0 0.25 metres a second, and its exit velocity is 2.54. So I put that into the equation. We have the air value at 0.25 meters cubed per second times two, which is the entrainment uh, coefficient, times 0.5. Then we put in the exit velocity divided by the um, terminal velocity, and the answer is provided as 5,080 liters a second. 5,080 divided by 250 is 20 to 1. So we have a 20 to 1 room, room induction ratio. So that's how much 
work the diffuser is doing uh, when it's given the room to do so. So you can see how powerful it is. And that's why uh, giving, giving these uh, diffusers a bit of space is, uh, and spatially laying them out correctly is an effective method. So you just saw a little bit of the shape air select there. I'm just gonna show you a little bit of it. Um, unfortunately, we don't have the time today to do the uh, full engineering uh, evaluation of it, but it's a very powerful software. And any of you would like to get in touch with me, we'd be happy to do it online or make an make a appointment to come and show you through the software, but I'll give you an introduction to it right now. All of the data you can find in our catalog for uh, selecting our products. So if you haven't got one and would like one, you can get it online or you can get a, get a hard copy. Shape Air Select, you access, access this by going to shapeair.com.au and logging in. When you log in, uh, you'll be taken to this page and you'll need to log in. Uh, at the moment, because there's so many uh, people trying to hack into these things and trying to access our IP, we ask you to sign in, uh, register with us, and then we'll send you back the, um, the access codes to get into the, the engineering software. It looks a bit like this. It'll access you in, into uh, a space where you can select all the different products. Most if not all of the products have uh, have the engineering attached to them, and you can select and uh, design with the software. This is what it does. Um, it pro provides you with a tool to create a submission, uh, a set of submission data. So here's an example I did: a little premium office tower has a couple of swirl diffusers in it, a bar grill, and an exhaust grill. I can build this schedule, and it presents this uh, in this form. And then for each one of those selections that I did, we end up with a selection report. And this is specifically for the, the elements of the product that I've nominated within the engineering software. So I've, here you can see I've got, done a SDH swirl diffuser at 200 litres, and it gives you the outlet throw, terminal velocity, the noise rating, the drawing, everything you need. I did the same for a, a, another uh, product at uh, the lower volume of 120. I did a uh, bar grill with uh, vertical blades, sidewall, and I did an exhaust grill. So you can see it builds a, a, a submission sheet at the front end and then gives you all the data sheets attached to the back of that in one combined PDF. So if you'd like to understand how, how to use that software, um, get in touch with me, please. Within the software, you can also access all the data sheets for, for any of the products in total. So full data, a complement for all of the products. You can access the Revit files for any of the products. So they'll be there in the, in the software as well. You can access specification. Um, Touch of a button, uh, that specification will be produced into a, a note, notebook form, which you'll copy into your computer and then you can paste it in anywhere you like. And so for all of that, um, yeah, please get in touch with us. We can do it in, in your office or ours. Um, we can do it by Zoom or we can do it by Teams. That's up to you. Please get in touch with me. That's my details. I'm sure uh, Marie will make these available later. At the moment, we are updating our uh, catalog data. So you'll see, start to see some uh, new information coming out and some new product, we have that. And I'm gonna show you a little bit of the new product. I'm gonna give you a sneak preview at some of the product and uh, show you some other product in our lab here. If you like what you see here, you are always welcome to come and uh, visit us here at Shape Air and we can do this lab demonstration live and demonstrate anything that is of interest to you. We can pretty much um, uh, mock up anything that's required for a project. I'm gonna talk over this as we go. It's a little bit clunky, but it's working. Uh, the first one here is on floor swirl diffusers and um, step displacement. 
This is the plenum box we produced. For anybody who hasn't seen what a displacement system is like, displacement is where you make a, a lake of um, clean air and then it naturally convects to take pollutants away. You can see here the swirl diffusers on the top there and you can see them falling into the, over the side, cascading over. This is what happens in a, in a project. They mix the air and then the air falls to the ground. And you can see here these joining in. And you can see the step displacement here creating the lake. And that's that's an example of a very short burst of, um, of uh, visual smoke. But this is how the system would operate continually. And next here, we have a, a, a new product, which I can't show you. It's called an SDY. It's a cyclonic radial diffuser. So this is something new we've produced. Um, unfortunately, our, uh, we, we're not quite ready to release this yet. But as you can see, it has a very powerful radial pattern. And you can see it's almost pulsing. And it's very versatile, this product because here it is again with a perforated fascia. So we can use it with a perforated fascia, which we can incorporate into something like uh, a clean room, hospitals, can work with um, Armstrong ceiling, uh, perforated ceilings. So it goes directly, doesn't need any um, uh, collars or rings. And now we're looking at a, a new linear uh, induction slot that we can produce now. This data is coming out shortly. One way, now two way. This is really easy to adjust. It takes seconds to adjust it. This is vertical. You can go to 45. We can change it. We can make it in many different patterns. As in the slots, I mean, we can make them uh, out of sync, we can make them different ways. Here it is doing both uh, horizontal left, right, and vertical in one. So that's just some of the products we've got coming out. I hope you enjoyed that little demo. If you want to see more of that, you can come and uh, visit our lab. Oh, it's going to start again now. And now I've just got a little bit of an overview of some of our products for you. Oh, no, I haven't. I've got, we also can do um, CFD modeling for you. We have an um, engineering department here that uses ANSYS uh, software. So we can uh, do a, a modeling for the PMV and predictive mean vote for you. This is an example, exact example of one we have done recently for the Melbourne quarter job. You can see here we are mimicking or modeling our uh, swirl diffusers for the project. And then we would put them into the actual uh, layout of the job, um, charting here the predicted mean vote values. And finally, the percentage of um, people dissatisfied, dissatisfied. So that, uh, that service is available. Our product range looks a bit like this. We have just about everything. And to be honest, this is only what we show. There's not uh, a product in the, in the world that we can't uh, access. If you have a very particular requirement, we can find something to suit your project. And we have the engineers here to help you design it into the project. We also have a really good range of uh, smart VAV diffusers. Uh, these come in uh, all range of sizes and um, and uh, function. We set up uh, a grid, uh, a set of symbols here in, in blue here that let you know what we've got in and what, what's imported, what's on stock, uh, what's available, what their values are. You can refer to that. We have them in both thermal and electronic. So um, when I say thermal, there's no wiring. They, um, uh, Petroleum-filled wax um, pistons, which are uh, phase-changing um, values uh, that 
change the settings for the VAVs and the temp to, to temperature, or we have the electronic version. The electronic version is Wi-Fi to a remote app uh, for adjustment, or you can have it as a wall thermostat. Uh, these are uh, just some of the range. We have them in plaque, square, linear, round, swirl, round and square, uh, linear slot and sidewall. So a vast range. Uh, as I say, they come in uh, thermal uh, power or electronic direct for um, Modbus connection into your, to your, your back net uh, or thermal for no wiring at all. So thank you. Thanks for your time. I hope um, that was interesting for you. And um, now I believe it's some Q&A. Was the ADPI work you undertook for yeah, yeah, during the design phase or during construction once mechanical? Um, I believe it was after um, that was actually done. The the, the CFD modelling was done um, originally uh, prior to us winning the project, but it was part of the design and it was part of the specification. So it was asked for um, as part of the requirement for the contractor. The ADPI part of it was not even in the spec, but the consultant asked for it and asked for an evaluation of it. So it was actually supplementary to the specification, but we did it anyway. Uh, the second question there is from Zarko, from Vipac. Hello, Zarko. Thanks for that. Um, what would be your impression about the current needs in industry for, th for this type of work? And are you aware of anyone in industry is taking any action to push these current reference guidelines? Um, Look, I've done a lot of work in Canberra, and this is where I see the ADPIs used the most. So all the government jobs, they, they tend to lag and don't move. But the ADPI, um, in conjunction with Green Star, is relevant. It's, it's a good way of um, making sure that people um, assess their layout to the product they're using. So I can't see any reason why the, the two don't coexist together. Um, uh, the the PMV um, evaluation is probably a little deeper, but it, it still relies on the, the products being um, selected and positioned correctly for that to be effective. So I hope that answers that. The next one is how smart diffusers relieve excess air in constant volume system. Well, um, the, the smart diffusers can have a dirty... Um, what I would call a dirty um, relief ring that just dumps the air back into the, the, the system for a, a return path job. And this relief ring is just based on pressure. The, the pressure is greater, um, becomes greater as, as the um, VAV shuts off. Um, and as the pressure gets greater, the, the graduated ring allows the air to dump back when the when the pressure is released to a certain point and these are uh, measured, the air goes through the diffuser. It's probably a little bit dirty and a bit bit wasteful, but in a uh, a package air conditioning system, it's a, a an effective and cost effective way to do it. Um, on a more complex system, you would either have uh, a pressure relief system or a pressure control system where the fan might be ramped down or something like that. I hope that answers that question. Um, so, of course, that does bring us to the end of today's session, everyone. Um, of course, just want to thank Andrew um, for your time uh, and for your presentation. Um, and, of course, thank you, everyone, for um, attending today's session. Um, I will send out an email when the recording does become available for viewing, uh, hopefully in the next within the next couple of weeks, um, and um, you can re-watch that one should you wish to do so. Um, if you want to register for any of ERA's other upcoming um, technology talk sessions or streamline webinars, uh, you can find a list of those um, with more information up on the ERA website. Um, if you want to present at an ERA webinar uh, or technology talk, um, please get in contact with me um, to arrange something. So until next time, thank you all again. Thank you very much, Andrew, um, and take care, everyone. Thank you very much.